Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Listen, people. I think I think these heavyweight fighters are going to be looking to get more zhang for their buck. Or like the saying goes, more bang for your buck. But when you got a guy like Shili Zhang, Chinese heavyweight, um, who has destructive power, has an extremely high uh, skill set, silver medalist from the Olympics, lost to Anthony Joshua, uh, and who has shown that he's taking his craft more serious than ever, um, and coming off of a huge win against Joe Joyce, which I'm going to be honest, when he fought Joe Joyce, not just me, majority of people felt that uh, Joe Joyce uh, was just, um, that he, he was a, a guy that just could not be hurt, felt his chin was granted, felt he was invincible, okay? Everyone was saying Tyson Fury would lose to Joe Joyce. Like, that is the kind of plateau they had put him on. And when you're up on a pedestal like that, uh, it, it, it comes with a huge fall if you get knocked off of it, and Julie Zhang knocked Joe Joyce off of that pedestal. Now, that being said, I fully, I fully expect Zhang to, uh, within six rounds, tranquilize Joe Joyce. Now, Joe Joyce has come in this fight 20 pounds, 20 plus pounds heavier. But, but this is what y'all need to understand, right? When the real deal starts, Joe Joyce, after five months of preparing for this fight, I don't think that's enough time for him to come now and pull a rabbit out of his hat or out of his backside. When the big Zhang gives you more Zhang for your buck, and he starts dropping them left hands on Joe Joyce, I think he's going to be all downhill. But this is what's interesting. If he gets past him, which I think he will, but you just don't know in boxing, but I'm going to go on the record and say I expect Zhang to stop Joe Joyce again. Because Zhang has a strength and conditioning coach, Zhang is in shape, and Zhang has done what he was supposed to to get ready for a rematch with a serious threat and Joe Joyce. Because Joe Joyce is coming in there to win. I just don't think he will. Because if you've gone years without moving your head, doesn't matter. If you're a guy who likes to come forward and just, like they say in the UK, have a tear up, that's what you are. It's like Arturo Gotti. He got with Buddy McGurk, moving his head a little bit, boxing, looking cute. Got in there, got hit a few times. All that goes out the window. You revert back to what you know. For Joe Joyce, what he knows is coming forward and just basically like Earl Smith, trying to just discourage and just, you know, beat their opponent down. But when you can't do that, what happens? Often these guys take a loss. So if Zhang gets past him, like I expect, listen, you know the people in China. Now, I read an article that said 60 million people in China watched the fight. But then I came and see that Zhang's promoter was saying 300 million people in China watched the fight. Now, let's just go for kind of somewhere close to the sweet spot. And let's just say about maybe 200 million, right? One little 175 or so. But, but, but none, nonetheless, even at, if it was 300 million, right? You guys remember Zhu Shiming, right? Y'all know who Zhu Shiming is? Let me show you who this guy is. Zhu Shiming. See, a lot of people forgot about him. Now, Zhu Shiming, let me show you. That's him right here. He put China on the map big time. You know what I'm saying? Now, Zhu Shiming, he, uh, he fought in the amateurs for a while. I read reports saying he's a two-time gold medalist. Some said he's a three-time medalist. I think bronze and two golds. Nonetheless, the man has a couple medals from the Olympics, okay? It's not just Rigan now, and it's not just Clarissa Shields, it's not just Lomachenko. Nobody talks about Zhu Shimmy. But Zhu Shimmy was out here giving people the business in his 30s. But what ended up happening to him that a lot of people don't know is he got some uh, serious uh, optic nerve damage to his eye. Matter of fact, he lost complete sight. Matter of fact, I'll tell you which eye was. He lost complete sight to his left eye. Complete sight. And after that, he, it was all downhill. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't go out here losing sight in your eye and having damage to your optic nerve and you think you're just going to come back to boxing like, you know, it's one thing to get double vision, stuff get blurry. This man lost sight. But that being said, the Chinese people got behind him. And he was being promoted uh, by Bob Arum. 
This man was fighting in China. This man was making serious dough out there. Now imagine this guy was a what was he man? A flyweight, lightweight. Oh, let me see if I can find what what what, what weight class he was in. But um, the bottom line, I'll put it up right here. The bottom line was Zhu Shimmy, right? With him getting all those gold medals and being the Olympian, the Olympian that he was, I'm pulling up that information for you right now, right? He had a lot of money behind him. And my thing is this. If you get a guy like Zhu Shimmy, okay, um, let me see something. That's, uh, let's see if I can pull it up. It's frustrating, you know, because the man's name is Zhu Shimming, but then you come and pull it up, and you know, that's not what uh, that's not what comes up when you type it in. Uh, he's not active anymore, but that's not what comes up. But let me—I'll tell you right now. Let me go to uh, let me go to Wikipedia and pull it up. But the bottom line is, a guy like Julie, Julie Zhang, let me pull this crap up for you. Wikipedia, right? This should be awful half the time, but anyway, it's about the best that I have for you right now. Okay, so boom, 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 boom. Let me pull this up right here. Okay, I'll just show you. So, Oju Shimming, he competed from 2013 to 2017, right, as a flyweight, okay? Now, here it says, you know, he's China's most successful boxer, uh, won three consecutive medals, bronze, uh, gold, and gold. So I was right with that. But this is what I'm getting at. Now you have Zhili Zhang. At the time when Zhu, Zhu Shimmy was fighting, there was good money behind him. He was making a few million a fight. And people just couldn't understand, how's this guy making the money? Because he's fighting out there in China. The China Chinese will support their own. Now you fast forward from 2016, 17 to where we are now. There's so much money in the sport of boxing. Zhili Zhang is a heavyweight. Let me tell you, there, there aren't many Chinese men walking around at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, weighing 281, 300 pounds in shape like him who can fight and box the way he can. The whole country is behind him. So once he gets past Joe Joyce, let me tell you something. If they market this man the right way, if the right people are involved with his career, go into China. He can fight in China and never leave China. And he can fight nobodies. And this man can make gazillions. Now, if he goes over and he gets AJ, which is a good fight for him because he, uh, he and AJ fought and AJ beat him uh, in the Olympics, right? Many people felt Zhang won that fight. But right now, Zhang beats AJ, no problem. <laughs> That's just my opinion. But if he goes and he can get a fight with AJ out there, it's one thing to go to Saudi Arabia. We know it ain't no money like the Saudi money. But I'll tell you what, China may be it if you want more Zhang for your buck. And I can see him beating Joe Joyce and then looking for a big fight against Yusik. And I can see that Yusik, for some reason, you know, the, the thing with Saudi ain't working out for him. He had to go fight in Poland because he can't fight in Ukraine. I can see where Yusik and Zhang make a fight uh, if, you, if Yusik gets past Hergovic in China. I could see that happening. Now, if Hergovic happens to beat Yusik, well, how interesting that would be to see Hergovic and Zhang in a rematch because I felt Zhang beat Hergovic, to be quite honest with you. Uh, so that those guys rematching would sell. And to do it in China, you know how much money these guys can make? You figure if you just get... 10 million of those people to buy the pay-per-view, depending on the price point and how they work, work the numbers. It could be extremely lucrative. And anything associated with Zhang, if he wants to go back and really, you know, uh, uh, set himself up in China as far as the rest of his boxing career, that man can make a lot of money. And for those of you who are saying, well, why would he want to go back to China and the rest of his boxing career? He just started. He didn't just start. Zhang's old, man. Zhang, like 37 or something like that. You don't have time to be pussyfooting around out here. He needs to be out here fighting and making the most money he can because this fighting uh, Joyce, I think he made a couple million. Joyce made a couple million. They had guarantees of like 500000 
but with you know the live gate and everything else, they both end up pocketing a couple million. So he's doing okay, but he's not making heavyweight money. He get past Joe Joyce, his next fight's probably gonna be for some serious dough, especially if you do it in China. When you take a look at China, just understand um, boxing. It, it has grown, it has evolved. The Chinese have always done exemplary when it comes to sports. Uh, they take it serious. It's a different type of discipline, different type of training. Um, it's a different type of honor uh, that these guys carry in their heart for the country. And I'm telling you, I've talked about this in other videos from the times I spent over there in Asia. It's, it's a whole different world when you're out there. And for me, I was out there boxing. So I'd be at the you know community gyms out there training. And some of these kids who they felt had the potential to go on and represent their country in the Olympics, that starts from small, I'm telling you. And when those kids aren't taking the sport serious, I've seen kids get beat, man. You know, those focus mitts, but the one that looks like a, a like a, a tennis racket, you know what I'm saying? They can hold them by the handle and they hit the mitt. I've seen, them, I mean, I'm telling you, I've seen some stuff that, abuse, I'll just put it to you like that. And uh, the trainers used to just explain to me, it's in their broken English, it's different. Over here is different, you know, it's culture. But I knew, I understood, you know what I'm saying? Um, with my family being, you know, coming from uh, the Caribbean and uh, I just know the mentality is a little bit different in other countries <laughs> and how they uh, approach things. So I was shocked a little bit, but I got it. But I, I do, for me, I wasn't trying to mess around in that gym and have nobody beat me with that damn uh, focus mitt. But that being said, Julie Zhang, the type of population, the type of uh, fanatics they have out there in China when it comes to their athletes and stuff like that. Uh, I definitely feel that Zhang could be the guy if he gets past Joyce. Uh, he could end up having a target on his back where more people want to fight him. You already see Derek Chisora wants to fight him over there in China. Why? Let me ask y'all something, right? Why do you think Derek Chisora wants to fight Zhili Zhang in China? It'll take a rocket scientist to figure out Derek Chisora's after the dollar dollar billiard. They know what money's out there. They know. Eddie Hearn knows. Everybody knows. You go also another place, Africa. If they can get that going, woo, a lot of money in Africa. We already know about the Middle East. China and Africa are the two, two, two areas where I think are going to be targeted even more for boxing events. The thing about going to Africa is you could probably take uh, any fighters over there, big name fighters, and it could probably do well promoting the event. But if you take Anthony Joshua over there or Deontay Wilder, well, of course, Francis Ngannou, but remember Anthony Joshua, yeah, that Nigerian lineage, and Deontay Wilder, he went out there and did uh, a little, uh, what's that called, man, uh, genealogy or whatever, man? But he went out there and found out, man, you know that he come from, you know, a, a Nigerian lineage, so uh, they just accept him, all right? But I truly believe Julie Zhang, right person behind him, he goes over there and he starts fighting in China. You're going to see a lot of people wanting to fight him. And it has nothing to do with wanting to fight him for the belt. It's going to be because the paydays are drying up stateside and they don't have to go all the way to Saudi Arabia. They can sit there and go to China and make a, make a good payday. But at the end of the day, I don't know if that's going to happen. But I already know Zhang wants to fight in China. And I think a great fight for him would be Hergovic. Because everyone in China knows that he lost to Hergovic. I think another great fight will be Joshua. Because they know that he lost to Joshua in the Olympics. And uh, outside of that, I'm not really sure. Maybe Usyk would be a good fight for him. But the Deontay Wilders, and, and I just, I'm not so sure how well that would go if they know Wilder. Because Wilder's not internationally recognized like we think he is. But AJ knows. I'm talking about when it comes to Zhang. But they know who AJ is. Because the Olympics and they follow his career, and he lost to AJ. They know who Hergovic is because as a pro, he lost to Hergovic. And um, I just think having those fights over there would be huge. But we'll see what they decide to do. But with Tyson Fury, whatever the hell he's doing, if he ends up retiring, uh, Usyk ends up losing. I'm gonna tell you all right now. I mean, who's gonna carry this sport of boxing? You know, is Zhang the guy to do it? I'm not saying he is, but I'm not saying he's not either. What about Deontay Wilder? We don't really know if he's coming or if he's going. We know a lot of people don't want to fight him, and we know why. Uh, I think he kind of shoots himself in the foot sometimes too, but 
really, when you look at what's there, who can really carry the sport of boxing? At least in China, we know it's Zhang. But outside of that, if he's out here just destroying people, let me tell y'all something. A lot of people will gravitate towards Zhang just because he doesn't speak English. You bring him over here to the States, you get this big, and that's just unfortunate. Guys in the States don't get a lot of love, man. Um, and, and that's just a fact. Uh, but when you get these guys from these other countries who come over here, and I'm not knocking it, I'm just telling you, it seems to me that there's a certain population that would rather support a foreigner uh, than support the local guys. You go over to the UK. I mean, they'll support the foreigner, but they ain't going to put more energy into the foreigner than the local guy. You go to any other country, and the local guy or the local girl, let me just say the local fighters, right? Because some people take offense to guy and girl. The local fighters, I tell you, man, I've been all over the world, like many of you, but I'm telling you, it's not, the United States isn't like that. I'll just say that. It ain't like that. I've been all over, all over, man. Um, and it's one thing when it comes to those guys and um, fellow countrymen, you know, they take that serious, man. There's a certain honor and loyalty there. So in the States, it's not quite like that. And you see that with sports. Uh, I think Deontay Wilder made a big deal about that. But, you know, he, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying Deontay Wilder's wrong. I'm just saying for Deontay Wilder, he, he was frustrated that, you know, Tyson Fury came over and got all this support. Um, but for him, you know, he just wasn't getting it. And, you know, it goes like that sometimes. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just telling you it kind of is what it is. So I think Julie Zhang can appeal to a lot of people, and I think he's uh, highly marketable, especially when you – first of all, he's damn 6'7 or something like that. Man's Chinese. He's southpaw. He knocks people out, okay? And his, his English is pretty good. He's just been doing a lot of interviews in Chinese lately, but that man English is pretty good. It's, it's people who gravitate towards him. I'm telling you that right now. So out of all the heavyweights right now, especially if you know, the, the Wilders start fizzling out, the AJ, whatever he's trying to do, I think the one person, if I say fighters will get more Zhang for the buck for fighting them, especially if Saudi isn't an option, maybe Zhang in China. He just got to keep doing what he's doing. He got the strength and conditioning coach, seemed to have worked on his stamina. He seemed to have tightened up those areas and make those refinements where, where it's necessary. And if that's the case, I'm telling y'all, Zhang could be the place people go to get more Zhang for the buck. He may be the money guy in the division. Doesn't It's not hard to, to, to come to that conclusion. But that being said, let's see. One thing I don't want is to see them put Jared Anderson in there with him. I think Zhang would destroy Jared Anderson, and that would be the end of Jared Anderson's career. But Jared Anderson still has a little, to me, a few more fights left before they throw him into with a Zhang. That would just be a, a recipe for disaster. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans all seven continents. We'll see what they do. But I expect Zhang to win this week. Knockout probably before six rounds. Um, and he'll be on to the next. And let's see what happens. Y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.